Good morning and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to make one of these beautiful pendants. My whole inspiration behind it was this beautiful 18 millimeter Swarovski Rivoli. I've had a stockpile of these for such a long time I finally decided I'm going to let go of some of these and that's why I decided to make a very large pendant that's very beautiful on. So I kept the theme going with both. I added Swarovski pearls, the Rivoli, a beautiful bicone, and then a heart here. But here I did a butterfly, and I think both of them are just so beautiful. And they really are just a simple design, but yet really striking when you wear it. So this is definitely beginner friendly. There's nothing complicated here. We're going to go ahead and run through our material list. We're going to need some gem duos, some kite beads, some size 8, 11, and 15 seed beads. And these are all Toho. And then a Rivoli 18 millimeter, a 4 millimeter Swarovski bicone. And then I'm using a teardrop pendant. You can use whatever you want. And instead of a pearl, I'm using a gemstone. And this is 8 millimeter. And then you'll need a bead cap, or I call it a little hat, to fit right on top of there, and that's what's here, and on this one. And then also a bail or a link, or if you do not have one of these, these are really, really cool um, links, by the way. I'll put everything in the description box below. You can just um, make a little loop and then add a jump ring and put it on a piece of chain, which is, um, I'm going to do that with this one. So that's why it's left just the way it is. One more thing, you're going to need a size 13 beading needle on hand. So keep it handy. We're going to need it when we go around to reinforce these edges. It just makes life so much easier for us. Okay, so on one and a half yards of fire line, eight pound fire line, size 11 beading needle today, we're going to string an alternating pattern of a size 11 and a kite bead. We're gonna do this 14 times. So you want 14 11s and then 14 kite beads. Okay. And once you have the pattern strung, we're going to slide it down, pick up our work, and we're going to tie it into a double knot, let it grab, I wrap and pull. And now we're going to attach a needle to the tail. And we're going to get rid of it if I can see in here. Oh my goodness, it's dark again outside. So. Again, I'm running a lot of lighting in here, which is it's very, very hard to see, especially when there's a lot of bling on the board, too, because you can't even see the detail in that beautiful Rivoli with all the lights on. Okay, so once you have your needle on, we're going to just weave away from this main knot. So I'm going to go through a couple beads just to weave away. So I went through the kite bead, 11 kite bead, and I'm going to go through two more, actually. Step out of that 11 right there, and here's where I'm going to throw two knots in. So I'm going to pick up this thread space, and before I pull that loop, put my needle in and pull down. And I'll do this two times. And then I'm just going to weave away and burn. And we're all done there. I'm going to get as close as I can. That thing is so hot. It, it makes me nervous. Oh, my goodness. I just put brand new batteries in it, so it's definitely hot. Okay. And now we have to just run around this piece one time. So take your time and reinforce and go through a couple at a time just to tighten it up because this is what's going to hold our stone in place. That very large, beautiful Rivoli. And you know they're angled weird, so you can't just run right through these quickly like you can other beads. So go through just a couple at a time and pull. 
each time we go around. And you should be able to feel when you go past the knot. When you go past the knot, then you know you're good to go. And then we'll step out of a size 11. I just want to make sure I'm not too, too close. When I get too close, it's blurry. If I'm too far away, then you guys can't see anything. So I get to keep checking to make sure I'm not like, up close and blurry all right so here we are I'm coming up on a knot I can feel it right now take your time and go right past that knot and you know we got a good one in there so if you need help use your little gripper or a pair of pliers and it's not going to be extremely tight we don't want it too too tight so don't worry if things are still wiggling around. We have to get in there for the next step. So we're gonna step out of an 11 right here. And now we're gonna grab our size 11s and we're gonna pick up five. All I'm going to do is skip this next 11 and go right, skip this 11 and go right into the next one right here. And we want to keep the beads on top, just like this, like a little bridge. And we'll repeat this all the way around. So five, jump this 11, and go right into here. And that's your repeat. Very, very easy. And see why I wanted a little bit of play? That way it's not overly tight, and we're stressing to get in there because we are gonna tighten this up in the next step. And I will have to hold the work, unfortunately, to do that next step, which is adding our beautiful stone. All right, a couple more. This is our last one, so five. We're gonna go right through this 11 right here. Yes, it's nice and snug now. Okay, so right in here. And then we're gonna step out the third bead, one, two, three, of that five bead group that we just added. So keep that in mind as we go around adding our 15s, which we're gonna grab next. Keep that in mind, the third or the middle bead. So you can either count one, two, three, you know that's the middle bead right there. One, two, three, right there. All the way around because I'm gonna cover the work up. We're gonna get our stone ready to go in there. Pop it right on in there. Just pull down a little bit and now I'm gonna pick up the work like this and I pinch it between my fingers. I'm gonna hold it just like this the whole time. And we're going to pick up five 15s. Okay. We're going to find the center. So I'm going to count over three. And I know that's the middle bead of the next group. And we're going to pull and pull down. And everything's really loose. So take your time turning as you go. And your repeat will be five 15s into the middle of that next group right there and pull and I'm just gonna turn oh my goodness I'm having trouble seeing today all right right through there and then keep going don't let go So find third and we're getting there we're creeping around slowly but we're getting there and it's definitely tightening up I can feel it 
and right through that middle bead. And here's our last stitch. Okay, right through this 11, and then I want you to continue through these five 15s and that next 11, right there. And I'm gonna put the work down for a second and pull really hard. I just wanna make sure everything looks, oh my gosh, it's so stunning. Looks like a beautiful flower. Absolutely, mm, I could stare at her all day long. Okay, but we have to reinforce. It's very, very important. So all we're gonna do is I'm gonna run through these five 15s plus that 111, and then I'm gonna put my needle in and pull. We're really gonna start using some force because see how they're moving around? That is not good, we do not want that. So run through the five, and I did mine for a total of three times. But for this one, I'm just gonna go around it this once, one time to secure it just because it's going to take me forever. So each time you go around, pull. And you don't want those 15s wiggling like that. And you'll feel it. Everything starts to tighten up. Right through there. Right through these. And so that's what you'll do. Continue doing until there's no movement. Like see these 15s, I still have a lot of room in here. You don't want that, but I'm gonna stop right here. Actually, I'll go through one more group. Okay, good. That's a lot tighter in there. Okay, so I went through one more group plus 111. Now I wanna weave down these two 11s right here. And then we're just gonna make a turn into the bottom hole right here of this kite bead. And I'll flip it over so you can see. So right now we're in the bottom hole. We're just gonna jump into this upper hole. And I'm gonna set these aside for just a moment so we can grab our eights and our gem duos and some size 15s. Okay, I'm gonna pull back just a little because I gotta leave this part on the board to show you. So what I want is this gem duo to fit in that space just like this, just like that. So what I'm gonna do is pick up the right hole, puffy side up, plus five 15s, and then I'm gonna slide it down. I'm gonna go back through that empty hole of the gem duo and then straight through that kite bead and pull. The next stitch will be one size eight and then we'll repeat. So we're gonna add a gem duo. So the right hole puffy side up plus five and then I always slide it down. It's just easier. And then I'm gonna go right through the empty hole and through that kite bead Pull, add a size eight, and that's gonna be your repeat all the way around. And I love this mix, this fall mix. It's called Gold Rainbow, and it's just so pretty. Yes, I'm channeling fall. I really do not like these humid, disgusting days where you can't even go outside and breathe. It's just, it's horrible. I went out this morning to take the garbage out and I was just, ugh, disgusting. Okay, so just keep going with that pattern. Your gem duo, your size eight, and you'll do this all the way around alternating. So nothing hard, nothing complicated. Right through these two. Okay, I'm gonna pull back a little and I'm gonna actually pick up the work so I can move a little quicker because it's not that hard. Just 
slide it down, go through these, pull, Okay, almost there. I know it's not the funnest thing to watch. All right, I wanna grab this color, that coppery looking one. Slide it down through here and here. And here we are at the last stitch. So we're gonna pick up a size eight run through that kite bead and then we're going to step up through this gem duo and all five of those 15s so go around all five and now we're ready to begin decorating but we don't have to switch down yet with our needles because we're only we've only gone through this um one time so we don't have to worry about that just going to move some of this clutter out of the way Okay, all we're gonna do now, this is so simple, we're just gonna start with four. I mean, we're gonna pick up four 15s and run down into this size eight and pull. Now four more 15s, jump up through all of these. All five of the ones above the gem duo. So it's one, two, three, always four, down into the eight, And then four more, and we'll go up and over that gem duo. All five of those teeny tiny 15s, but they really, look at how that just cleans it up. They really make a difference. Okay. I'll try to pick up the pace a little bit because <laughs> it's, like I said, very repetitive. It's not difficult. I just want to get to the fun part where we're going to add our little extra fun stuff. So I told you guys, I hoard Swarovski. I found about 30 of these tucked away. I don't know what is wrong with me, but I just have a very hard time letting go. I've had them for so many years. So I was afraid that the color wouldn't be available anymore, but it actually is. So it's just beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, much more perfect. I mean, much more beautiful in person, excuse me. Okay, so here we go. Last stitch, we're gonna weave up and around and now it's gonna get tight. So what we're gonna do is just step out of this size eight right here. So, I'm gonna move these over, let me grab my 11s. And I'll show you on this one. So we're right here. We're stepping out of this eight. And all we're gonna do, I'm gonna put it on a flat surface because the bead mat is squishy and it doesn't do it justice. Look at how beautiful those colors are. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we're stepping out of the size eight. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna pick up three 11s, one size eight, my beautiful round here, eight millimeter round, the bead cap, one size eight, and then I'm gonna pick up a different pattern for this because this is a different type of a bale or a link. 
So I'm going to pick up six. One, two, three, and I just want to make sure they go through. Yes. Four, five, six, and then I'm going to drop it down. And all we're going to do is skip everything we just put on and run right back through. And you're going to do this and not be able to see very well when we go back to reinforce. So you want to go right back down and step out that eight right before those three elevens and pull, pull down just like that. Pick up three and we're coming out in this direction. We're going to bring the thread around in this direction and go back through the eight this way. All right. And now I'm going to run up and down off camera and reinforce this whole thing. But for some reason, my thread is getting very, very short. So I'm going to have to attach in a new piece to reinforce this whole thing. So I'm just going to weave to show you how to find the center because this is an odd number. So we're not going to be exiting um, the opposite eight. Obviously, we're going to be exiting right there. So I'll show you that. So just take your time and weave down until you get to that space. And I'll show you where in just a minute. And we still have plenty of room in here with a size 11. So no stress out on the 15s because they do pop if you have too much thread going through them all at once. So for the moment, I'm good. Okay, so here's that eight. You want to find the bead that is directly across, and that's going to be our seventh 15 right here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right there. That's where we want to step out. That's directly across. And then I'm just going to do a very simple pattern. I'm going to go one, two, three. I'm going to pick up an eight my little bicone and an eight. And I just want this to swing a little bit. So I'm gonna pick up one, two, three, my teardrop pendant, or excuse me, I have four on my teardrop pendant and then four more, just like that. And we're just gonna skip all of this and run right back through the eight bicone and all these seed beads. And we're coming out the 15 again in this direction. So I'm going to bring it back around and go through the 15 in this direction. So everything lays nice and even. Just like that. And that's what you want. And it is oh, it's so stunning. But my work is way, way too loose. So here's the part. All you have left is some reinforcing. So I'm going to run up and down this thing one more time and then I have to unfortunately stop and add thread in somewhere because I don't know what happened. I thought I pulled enough, but anyway, just to show you, you would run up this whole piece and then up and around that whole top area because that's really heavy up there. But I want to show you right here. So right before this eight is where I'm gonna tuck a knot, two, excuse me. So I'm gonna put one here and do it one more time. And that way I can drag that knot straight through that size eight, like this. Run right through that eight and don't slip. All right. And then we would just continue weaving around and then you will switch down to your 13 and just go around all the edges tightening everything up and that's it that's all it is and it's stunning what a beautiful piece here's the other one and here's one more so you can tell i really like a project when i go crazy and make a bunch of them these are just beautiful and i don't know if i showed you in the beginning but this one, I found this really cool leather and it has like all different types of colors in it. 
and it really picks up the color of the um, of the butterfly, excuse me. So I thought it looked really cool, and that's what I'm going to use for that one. Okay, and I hope you enjoyed this project. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you for your time and subscribing to my channel. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Take care, and I'll see you really soon. Bye-bye.